Hi, this is David Valade with Alta Vista Technology. In Sage Intact, we have a lot of different ways to get at the information. We have dashboards just like this. We have financial report writers. We have all sorts of key performance indicators or performance cards, we might call them. We have a whole platform area where we can make custom reports to report on any number of things. There's even an optional tool that was released in the last year or so called the Interactive Custom Report Writer to do more of a pivot table sort of analysis to let your users drill in and drag things around to slice up the information however they see fit. This is all great. There's lots of great options there. The one thing I would like to have, though, is more of a visual tool. I would love to have more of a graphical interface that would allow my users to click and, and well, interact with what information we have. If that's the goal, there's a great way to do that called the Interactive Visual Explorer. So let's make a report. I'm gonna go into the reports area and you can see there's my interactive custom reports, Visual Explorer, financial graphs. There's lots of things here, but I'm going to hit the little plus symbol on the Interactive Visual Explorer. And let's make a simple one here. I'm gonna make a brand new report and maybe I'll call this, I pasted a name here, the Alta Vista Tech AR Analysis Report. Okay, that's easy. Uh, and then this very important section here is to pick the area within the Visual Explorer or within Sage Intact, I suppose, of where we wanna build our report. This is very, very uh, detailed. I can see really any area you can imagine available to report on. I can't think of anything that's not, to be honest. But in my example, I want to do some very quick and easy studies of uh, a, the AR invoices that I have. That's the first step. We're done with it. <laughs> so moving on, let's create that visual board. And now we have a new interface for building our reports. Let's take a quick look around. So over here on the left, you can see the data elements. These, This is all uh, stemming from the AR invoices because that's what I picked in the last step. What's nice about this is uh, Sage Intact starts at really the detail. That's the line items on the invoice. And these little folders will expand and expand and expand so I can find anything on the invoice line, the invoice itself, or something related to the invoice. More on that later. This main section in the middle is where I'm going to spend most of my time. This is where I'm actually going to be playing with the report. And I have other things up here as far as saving it, uh, making a narration, and just different ways to visualize the data. And, and up at the top here, it's another place to add filters. I think that the easiest way to understand this, though, is to just get jump in and, and see what you can make. Okay, so down here you can see there's this canvas area. And the canvas is what we call this main section. You can actually have different tabs here. That's the plus symbol. I liken that to having different tabs in Excel. And once you have those different tabs, they can actually interact with each other, which is a lot of fun. So I'm going to come in here and I'm just gonna rename my canvas here. Let's rename that. And we'll call this, um, say AR by customer and check the box. Perfect. I can change that at any point though. So that's, that's perfect. Okay, so what I'm picturing here is I wanna see basically a bar chart that would show me, basically I wanna see a graph, I wanna see uh, visually, how much I have in receivables per customer. A lot of ways I could do that, but let's uh, let's do that right now. Let's kind of step through it. If I hit the little drop down at the top here, you can see I could do a bar chart, stack bar chart. This is amazing. All these different types of things that you can make. Uh, I won't go through them all, but you can see the the icons here about sunburst graphs or different plots or different kinds of radials. Any kind of graph you can imagine, we probably have it. I'm gonna pick that horizontal stack though. And you can see how quickly things are gonna to come together. All right, so the first thing I would like is uh, I'm picturing, since I picked horizontal here on my Y axis, I wanna see a list of customers. Okay, so I can see my AR invoices at the top. We're gonna to go get some data from our data elements. I'll expand the invoice detail. And just to make this a little easier for later, I'm going to drag that over, make that a little wider there so I can see more information from my elements. I would like the customer off the invoice itself. So I'm gonna expand the related objects and I can see the invoice. That's good. And I said I wanted the customer. So I can see, uh, actually there, it says invoice.customer here. That's interesting to me. I wanna keep dragging down here just because there's all sorts of things down in here in this folder. And if there is any challenge here, this might be it, just finding the thing you want. Do I want the ID? Do I want the name? Do I want both? I'll take the name. 
So I'm going to drag that over here. I can drag it onto <laughs> my chart itself, or I can drag it onto the Y category. As I do that, uh, I'm building my graph. I did that one thing. I grabbed my customer name over to the Y axis. And Intact is telling me, hey, I'd love to give you a preview here, but I have insufficient data. I just have one thing. I don't know what else to do. So I have more work to put into this. That's fine. So I put in the uh, customer name here. If I scroll down here, I can see different things on the invoice itself. Here's a trick that I like a lot, though. If I scroll back up here, there's this area called measures. Half the time I'm trying to find something, it's a number. And if I want to find a number, I'm more likely to find it in the measures area. The Visual Explorer puts these little number symbols to remind me at a glance that th these are numbers versus like the little A symbol you see over on my customer name. Those are labels. So I can see total selected, total paid. This is interesting, right? So I can see um, total paid or I can see the transaction amount. Let, watch what happens when I take this. I'm going to take the transaction amount and I'm going to drag that over. I'll just put it right there in the middle on the data. Hey, I have a graph. <laughs> That's not bad. That didn't take very long at all. I can see the transaction amount and I can see everything by, by customer. <laughs> it, it was just that easy, right? I can save this off. Uh, I think I will hit save. And I can uh, share this on a dashboard or however I want to work with it later. But let's complicate this just a bit. So this is showing me the transaction amount of the invoices. So that's like sales. I can also see uh, amount paid. So why don't we just for fun, let's play with it. I'm going to hit the little X here to remove my data on the transaction amount. And instead, I'm going to drag in the total paid. I'll drag that over to that access. And a little bit different, but now I can see the total paid. Pretty good. It, that's how easy it is to just move things around. There's something here that I, I know I, I don't see in this list. If you if you scrutinize this, you can see base amounts so that's dealing with currencies. I can see amounts paid. But what I don't have, I can see transaction amount. What I don't have, and I'm deliberately picking a co more complicated example, not hard, but just slightly more complicated. What's the amount remaining? I can see the transaction amount right there. I can see the amount paid. I have those two pieces. If I can somehow take the amount of the transaction, transaction amount, and subtract the amount paid by the customer, that would be my total due. That would be a great thing to have. But, oh, unfortunately, I don't see that in the list. Not to worry. I can get there. Actually, I'll leave that uh, measures open here. You'll see why in a moment. And I'll come down and I have this whole My Calculations area. So I'm going to right-click on the My Calculations area and I'm going to add a calculation. Depending on what expertise you have in report writing, this is either a little bit scary or just <laughs> you're going to just love this. So I want to make something here. I'm going to make a field that doesn't exist. I want to say um, total due. Maybe I'll put total due amount because I might do total due quantity of invoices. I might have something similar. That's just a label and I can change that later too. And I want to take basically, like I said earlier, I want to take the uh, amount minus the total paid. So let's do that. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to find that uh, transaction amount. I'll drag that over here. That's good. I could have typed it, but that's perfect. And I'm going to say minus and I'm going to say the total paid and just drag that over here as well. Okay. And I'll hit save. So now I have a brand new field, total due amount. So instead of dragging, like I did a moment ago, the transaction amount or the total paid, Let's drag this new thing over here. And we have that. Pretty good. Uh, we can fact check these numbers here, but let's, um, <laughs> trust me when I say those are right. <laughs> All right, well, let's make this even better. Uh, one of the things I can do here is um, I kind of want to sort that. So let's uh, come over here into this menu. There's so much that we can do here. We're only going to scratch the surface, but I'm going to say uh, let's uh sort the total due amount from high to low. And that's looking even better. I have all that pretty um, pretty numbers. Now, this may be what you want to see. This may be done, to be honest. But if I wanted this on a dashboard, it probably doesn't help me seeing all these zero customers here. I'd like to do a filter. So if I scroll over here, you'll see I do have a filter area. All right. Well, I'm going to use that total due for the filter. So in a range, I could say a minimum of whatever to whatever. So let's show a couple ways of doing this. I could say, I want to say total due amount. Let's say maybe I'll start at a dollar 
and I'll go up to very high numbers. Right, so here I have uh, from $1 to a very high dollar amount, and that's a much more easy to understand report. But we're not done. Um, let's see, what else could we do with this here? I don't love the colors here. It cycled through colors as I was changing things. So I can come into the color area and I could uh, reset my visualization colors to go back to the colors I had at the beginning. That's a little better. I could go to managing the assignments here and I can actually see different palettes in here. So if you have a color theme that you'd prefer, I like the Alta. <laughs> Alta Vista technology prefers Alta. Hey, go figure. So I'll pick that and I can have that color scheme and that works out great. This is a little bit advanced maybe, but you could even do things where you can take the total amount due that I'm using in the graph and I can drag that into the colors. And so now what it's doing here is it's assigned a range here so that the bigger amounts have a darker color and there's lighter still. That is not bad. I'll do maybe two more things, but again, this could be a series of videos. It may end up being that. Just wanted to get a just a quick start here. A couple things I could do is I can add some filters here to the top, and I can add that other tab I mentioned. So I'm going to hit the other canvas here, and I'm going to make something here and rename this canvas, and we're going to call this the AR Detail tab. So here I'm going to drag in the total amount due, and... Now I'm going to change things here. So instead of doing that stacked selector, the, or excuse me, that stacked uh, graph we had before, here I'm going to pick just a table. So the reason I'm doing this is I'm picturing in my mind here, wouldn't it be great if I had on this first tab a list of all of my total due by customer, but then back on this detail tab, I can actually show the invoices and show the information related to it. So I'm getting there. That's looking good. I have my... Uh, my transaction about there. But then we just keep adding things that we want. So for example, um, let's say I collapse my measures here and I'm gonna go over to the invoice itself. We were here a moment ago and I'd like to say, oh, how about the date of the invoice? And I'll just, I could drag that. I like dragging things. I just like dragging it over into the rows area, but I could drag it over here onto the canvas itself if I like. But that worked out good. I can see that. There's That's great. Uh, how about I pick the customer? I'm going to drag that up here to the top. That's looking really good here. Ah, uh, yeah, I've seen those zero dollar amounts. I forgot about that. Yeah, well, I don't want to see those. Let's get rid of those. So I'm going to drag my total due over to uh, my filters like we did a second ago. And again, I'll just say we can do from one dollar. I don't want to show pennies <laughs> up to a very high dollar amount. Okay, and you can see things are shifting in the background. Pretty good, not bad. Maybe I'll do the uh, invoice number too. I guess that'd be something natural I'd want to pull in. Here's my invoice number, and I'll drag that. Uh, how about right there? All right, looking good. And I can scroll to the bottom, and I can see all my invoices here. This is looking really good. I don't see totals. I like totals. So why don't I just hit the right click and just check the box to say show totals. And now I have my total. So one last thing I'll show here is if I go back to my pretty graph that I have, and it is pretty, I, <laughs> you can add those filters up to the top, and I like that a lot. So one of the things we said was, uh, what if you wanted to filter by customer name? Well, I'll just drag that right on up to the top. What about if I wanted to have the filter here be something that is, how about by location? Well, that's a dimension, actually. So that's one way that I could do it. I'll pick the location, and I'll find the location name. Now, I did that pretty quickly. I've been in playing around in Intech for quite a while, so I was able to know that I can come into the location name. I guess I should mention, so I could come up here and hit the little search and I could type the location name and I could find something uh, even faster, but I, I'm just used to moving around and grabbing things. So now that I'm here, I'll just grab the uh, location name and I'll drag that up to the top and I can see it shows me the locations that I have and I'll just hide that and, and on and on and on. Now let's take a look. That was super fast, but let's see what I could do with that now. If I hit the location drop down, let me pick Canada. And now uh, my list of invoices or my, my graph of invoices has changed. I could just see the Canadian invoices. Now I'm going to point out something here. If I switch over to my AR detail, you'll notice this is uh, just as I left it. It's my full AR detail. Well, here's a fun trick that I like. This is how I would picture this report working best. If I go back to my original tab, there was a little push pin area 
where I could pin the, or just click the button on the push pin, I can pin these filters. So even though I added the filter here on the first part of my canvas, now watch what happens. If I toggle back over to my second area, this will now show the detail that I picked on the first tab. So when I was back on that first area, I said, show me all my Canadian invoices. Since that was pinned, that's, it remembers that and it carries it over. I can see there's the two customers. Innovation Arch is my second one. That's um, 291. That's slightly higher than the first. And if I go back to my first tab, that uh, does appear to be right. And I can actually see the numbers then that all checks out. My goodness, you can you can go way beyond what I'm showing here. I'll hit save on this and I'll show maybe a quicker way to get what you want. If I hit the little um, interactive visual explorer, instead of hitting the plus like I did at the beginning, I'll hit the word interactive visual explorer. Here I can see a list of reports that I've made previously. And a great way to hit the ground running is hit the visual board library. And you will see a lot of uh, very polished, ready to go reports for the taking. I'll pick AP Payments Overview. That sounds like a good one. And I can hit Edit on that, but I'll hit Run on that. And even though I was able to make a report in a very short order, this is <laughs> a slightly more ambitious report. This one, of course, is on Accounts Payable. And you can see there's the uh, similar idea to what I was doing, where you can have different tabs at the bottom. The way this works, I believe, is this is set up so that I can interact by clicking on parts of the chart and it can actually highlight or, or actually cascade throughout the visualizations. You have those different kinds of selectors at the top um, so you can see all the different things that you might be interested in and have it affect the entire report altogether. And wow, this is uh, pretty great. So if you had this, uh, you can always hit plus and impress your colleagues and boss and tell them all how you slaved over this report to get it just so. And secretly, we all know that this was a little bit easier than that to build. Or even my other report, if I switch back to um, other tabs here, but if I switch back to that report that we made together, I was able to make this one super fast. And this is a usable report that adds information. It's interactive. Users can actually click on it. They can filter, they can drill, they can do different things. I don't have to anticipate all the different needs of my users. Instead, I can give them a report that has built into it all the different ways that they can twist and turn the information to get what they need. This was but one step in the whole journey of making incredible reports with the Interactive Visual Explorer. If you have any questions on this, feel free to reach out to any of us over at AltaVista Technology and we'll be happy to help. Thanks.